I made a conscious choice to do everything I was afraid of. So, like, I was petrified to even walk into a shopping centre at one stage in my life. And this was, again, around 33 years of age. But the way I would treat a shopping centre was, I would drive up the shopping centre with my wife and my children in the car, I would park in the car, sit in the car, wait for them to go shopping, and then they'd come back, and then I'd take them home. And the reason why is I was just petrified to go into the shopping centre. And so what happened was I, I decided to do two visits a week to a shopping centre for no reason other than to sit in the shopping centre. And I did that for three hours every time, two times a week, until I confronted the emotion. And the emotion, after a while I worked out, the emotion was I was, I was tired of being looked at by everybody. I couldn't cope with being looked at by everybody. I had these really big emotions about people looking at me all the time. And I went through that emotion. And when I got through that emotion, I could walk in a shopping centre and be fine. I then uh, had a problem with walking up to a shop assistant and asking them for help. So what I did then was I would choose something to buy one week, one thing. <laughs> go into the shopping centre and walk, go into every shop that, I, that had that particular thing and go up to the shop assistant and ask for their help. And then let myself feel the emotions that are coming up. Now as I did all of that, what happened was that just caused me to get into this state where I could feel my terror. And what eventually happened was every single morning I woke up in a terrified state and I went into this... Uh, um, my, my body, my entire body went into a cramp is the best way to explain it. And it would last anywhere up to two hours. And in a few times I had to be hospitalised because of it. So over a period of, of three months, that happened twice a day for nearly three months. Uh, I don't know if that's encouraging people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you how much terror I have. <laughs> you don't have that much terror, but this is how much terror I have. And so what I did, and I, all I did was concentrate on breathing, just breathing diaphragmatically all through that process. So in the process of confronting my life, everything I was afraid of, that brought up me, that got me into this emotional state where I started confronting the terror naturally every single day. <coughs> and as I released that terror, my life changed markedly. So over that three month period, it started, I was in these fit, what we call fear fits, I call now, for, for a couple of hours in terrible pain, just, just managing to breathe. A few times I passed out and was taken to hospital, but most of the time I stayed in them. And, and I just allowed that to occur, allowed that to occur, until it was done. And then a lot of times I slept nearly 48 hours after that because it was so exhausting on my body. And I just allowed myself to sleep for 48 hours as well. And then, um, and then as that occurred, as that lessened, as these fear releases occurred, it all lessened and by three months later, they took five minutes. And so in five minutes it was over. And then after that, shortly after that, I had none after that ever again. So the key is to actually allow yourself to go into the experience. Do you know what I mean? We all have like the belief, like, if you walk up to the edge of a cliff, we have fear, it keeps us safe, you know? Does that mean that once we work through all our fears, we're not going to have those fears of that are supposed to keep us safe, you know? Like, no, yeah, that's right, you will not have those fears. So, so like, I don't purposefully touch a hot stove, because I know it's hot and I'll get burned. Does that make sense? But, but isn't that what teaches us in the first place to, to be afraid of those things? Like when we're young, like you touch a hot stove and it's like, oh, and then you learn to be afraid of that. Yeah, but that's the, that's the learning by experience rather than learning by being taught. And what I've, what I've come to feel now, and while I would agree with that statement before, now what I actually feel is that, that everything comes to me through my law of attraction just to trigger emotions. So once I've released all emotions, for example, even if I touch something hot, I won't get burnt. Right. Even if I hold a snake, I'm not going to get bitten. There's actually reference to this in the Bible, by the way. Um, if, I, if I hold a snake, I won't get bitten because I've released the emotion that would cause that snake to bite me. Does that make sense? So we have to face everything we're afraid of, basically. Everything. There is no fear in love, in perfected love. No fear in perfected love at all. You're not afraid of what will happen to your children, you're not afraid of what will happen to you, you're not afraid of what of death, you're not afraid of pain, you're not afraid of anything. 
I just don't understand how we're going to get this all done in time. <laughs> well, as, as you receive divine love, your soul changes so rapidly that all of these emotions get confronted. All you need to do is allow the emotion. As you allow the emotion, you'll get into new states. Another example, I was on, I think I've told this before, but I was on a massage table getting triggered with deep tissue massage. I did three sessions, uh, sorry, all together six sessions, but they were the last three sessions I was doing. And Ange was there, I was in Dallas. I was having these massages, coming away all bruised, right? And going through these terrible experiences, having massage and screaming and crying and everything. And then the very last one that I had, I just went through this barrier. And the woman was doing exactly the same thing, right? And I felt pleasure instead of screaming. And when I say I was screaming, I was screaming, like crying and screaming in the pain, in the pain of it. And I went through that barrier into this place where I was no longer screaming and crying. And it felt pleasurable, actually. It was tingling sensations on my body. And she was doing exactly the same thing. So what happened, what I realized in that moment was I just released all my fear about that pain. And in the process of releasing the fear, the pain automatically just disappeared. And this is what will happen to you through this process. As you receive more divine love, there's less fear. As there's less fear and you allow yourself to confront your fear and feel your fear and release it, what will happen in the end is that you'll get to a place where there is no pain either. Because it's fear that creates pain. So it's only fear that creates pain. So let's look at this sexually. If, if as a woman you've got pain in your vagina, you're afraid about something going on in there. What is it? You need to ask yourself what it is. Does that make sense? If you've got pain in your abdomen, you've got issues with regard to being afraid about something about that. There's a fright, and you're always afraid of an emotion in the end. So allow yourself to feel that. And these things can happen so rapidly, Joshua, it's like, you know, you can have one experience and the next day be totally different. Does it feel like you, you like, I keep having this thing coming to my head, like, we've got to go to hell to get to heaven. You've got to go through hell to get to heaven. That's what it feels like. The truth is that most of us are already in hell. That's the problem. And yes, you have to experience being where you are before you're going to get to where you want to be. So the very truth is that most of us are in denial about where we are. And that's what the issue is. That's the problem. If we weren't in denial of where we are, and we knew exactly where we are, we'd already be experiencing the emotion. And ironically, we'd be releasing it and being in a new place automatically. But God-reliance is a big part of that as well. If we become God-reliant, then the process isn't as painful. Yeah. So I found in before, and all these fear things that I'm discussing, by the way, about myself, they all happened before I became God-reliant. So, so the three months of dealing with it that way was because I was self-reliant, not asking God for assistance. Is that why it was so hard and took longer? Yeah, yeah, hard and very long, and, uh, and took a lot out of me as well, emotionally, to do it. But you don't have to do that because you've got God there, and God can, when you allow emotions to flow, God can just reach in and call that, pull out the causal. But, but you can't do that if you don't allow the emotions to flow. Now, last weekend, you experienced that feeling. You remember when you had that, that emotional release in the group last week? Remember the feeling straight after that you felt? After the group? Yeah, I sort of felt like calm. Exactly. So you actually had released a causal emotion and within a half an hour after you'd finished releasing it, you felt this beautiful sense of peace and calm. And fresh. And fresh and, and quite happy, if you remember too. You were quite, like, changed in that moment. And that's what it will be like when you do it with God. Thanks.